occasion, we're here for a ceremonial bill signing. This bill was signed immediately after, after it was passed and signed by me because we wanted to get it into effect that moment, which we did, which uh, gave uh, new tools to our law enforcement as well as uh, to our judges and also to comfort to our people. This, we call it constitutional carry and graduated penalties, is something that has been, um, of course, deeply tied to the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution, which all of us here understand, and also is the necessary step forward with those graduated penalties to send in the message to the criminals and would-be criminals, and particularly those who've gotten accustomed to the revolving door in South Carolina, that door is now closed. It's not going to keep revolving. So we are, we're, this is a happy day. It's a good step forward. And I will call on those who pushed this through and did the brain work. Starting with you. That's Senator Shane Martin. Go <laughs> oh, <yeah>. ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Governor McMaster, for having me here at this press conference and ceremonial bill signing. I really appreciate it. This is a long day coming for me. I started this process when I first got elected, and I think uh, Senator Larry Grooms turned over the mantle to me in 2012 to become the head sponsor. And I'm just so glad to get it across the finish line. For me, it has always been about protecting our God-given rights under the Constitution and making sure government doesn't interfere. I'd like to thank a few people. Even though I've been the lead sponsor from the State Senate, Representative Bobby Cox from the House is the bill sponsor of the bill that actually passed. It just shows we don't have any pride in authorship here. We want to get the issue passed, and that, that was accomplished today. We've heard the same old tried and true arguments that it's going to be the wild, wild west. That's not going to happen. We heard that with open carry with training. We've heard that any time that we try to make sure our Second Amendment rights are not, are not messed with at all. It never happens. But I'll tell you one thing, and the governor said it before, the one group of people that's never going to follow the law are the criminals. And they're the ones that will be punished under this legislation, and the law-abiding citizens are going to be protected. I also want to thank everybody in the House and Senate that voted for it, that's standing behind me today. I want to say a special thank you to our majority leader who helped get this bill up for special status in the Senate. Everybody knows the Senate's rules are very hard to deal with sometimes. I live by them and die by them sometimes, but it, it's still, it's what it is. But we had a conference committee of myself, Senator Massey, our majority leader, Senator Brad Hutto, who's our minority leader. We had Representative Bobby Cox, Representative Micah Kasky, and Representative Justin Bamberg. And I want to say just one thing about our minority leader. He didn't like this bill at all, but I wanted to thank him publicly for chairing the, the conference committee as the number one senior member of the Senate chairs the conference committee. So I want to give him a little shout out. He probably doesn't want a shout out, but we're, we're going to give him a shout out. But today is a, just a special day. I want to thank everybody behind me, beside me, the governor. Lieutenant Governor, I just want to thank everybody for being here and letting this day be a day where law-abiding citizens can exercise their Second Amendment rights without interference from government. Thank you. Amen. Majority Leader David Hyde. Thank you, Governor McMaster, Lieutenant Governor Pam Levitt. Thank you for allowing us to be here. It is a, uh, a, a great day in, here in, in the State House. Uh, the governor made it very clear to us in the, in the House that uh, as soon as we got this bill to him, he would sign it immediately, and he never wavered from that. And so he, he, he held up his word as, as we debated it out and back amongst the House and the Senate. The, the bill kept, uh, we'd, we'd find a little something here, a little something there, and we, we, we would slow up the process, and the governor would send a little note to us and saying, I'm still ready to sign that bill as soon as you get it to me. So he wanted to sign that bill for the people of South Carolina, and that's where we were several weeks ago when we were able to, to uh, pass this bill and have the governor sign it, and today the ceremonial signing. It is a good day for all the citizens of South Carolina. You know, back home we hear from our constituents quite a, quite a bit, Senator, from, uh, about certain things, but I believe I've heard more about this back home than I have about anything we've dealt with. 
and uh, all of our, most of our citizens uh, appreciate what we've done here. And Governor, they pre certainly appreciate you signing this bill as quickly as you did. I certainly want to thank uh, Senator Senator Martin, Senator President Alexander, led the, led the process over there in the Senate. They did a great job keeping their group together just as well as we did in the House. Uh, he's mentioned Representative Bobby Cox. This has been an issue of his quite some time. He couldn't be here with us today. He's He got tied up some, in another country somewhere on his regular job. He's, he's trying to get back home, but he wishes he could be here today, but uh, he certainly sends his regrets. But uh, he did a great job leading that. Representative Mike Kaskey and Representative Justin Bamberg did a great job on the uh, on the, on the conference committee. Speaker Merle Smith did a great job sort of keeping us in line, kind of allowing us to, to take this bill up as quickly as we did. A lot of these members behind us here stood with us throughout the thing. We, we held strong in our beliefs and what we needed to pass. And um, we, we do believe this is a great piece of legislation for the great folks of South Carolina. The one thing I particularly like about it is the governor's already stated is it it tells the felons and in coming into South Carolina that are already here, we're watching, we're coming for you. Because this, this piece of legislation now allows our law enforcement to really punish those that get these guns illegally. Felons in possession is a vital part of this bill. And so we believe that this is gonna cut down on some of the crime in South Carolina. We hope it is, we believe it will. And I think time will tell when we do that. So again, thank you very much for, for allowing us to be a part of this, Governor. Thank you for allowing us to pass this good piece of legislation. Senator Martin, thank you again for your leadership on the Senate side. Representative Cox, even though you're not here, we want to simply say thank you to him. And again, thank you very much. Thank you. And one, one last point. Um, it did take a while to get here. This, is, this has been debated in, uh, by law enforcement and citizens and those in politics and actually in political office for a long time. But I want to remind everybody, passing laws is supposed to take time. That's one reason we have three branches of government, and one of them's busted up into two parts, the House and the Senate. Because every law we pass, often enough to protect a constitutional right, often to limit the liberty of our, some of our citizens, notably the criminals. So before we take any liberties from anyone, it's supposed to be a long, arduous, carefully thought out process. And that is what has happened here. And I think what has been produced and is going to prove to be a great step forward. So I want to thank all of you who worked so hard to get this, get this done. Are there any questions for anyone? Well, they still have to pass the background check and, and those, those sorts of things. And there's some that because of prior convictions or, or other forms of misbehavior won't, won't be allowed. But what has uh, occurred in other states, I think there are 29 that have, have passed such laws and they have not seen, seen that happen. But what I've heard from citizens just a few minutes ago having lunch, I was given a pat on the back. Uh, they say it, it makes them feel makes them feel safer. So I'll say that time will tell, but I think time is going to show that this is a, this is a good step forward. You want to add? I'll, I'll add one thing. I'll add one thing. Um, the Constitution doesn't specify the age. So that was a problem with our current CWP law, that whether you like it or not, those 18, 19, and 20-year-olds should be eligible. And I think this, the General Assembly took notice of that and you know, that, that's where the Constitution falls, and that's why we're happy about it. Another reminder on that, you can join the Army and a lot of other things get shot at and carry weapons if you're 18 years old. And sometimes back in World War II, people were lying about the age to get in so they could go fight. More questions? Governor, yes, sir. There's always more work to be done in law enforcement as long as they're killing and stealing and all methods of crime going on. We, we will still have work and no, no law has all the answers. We, there's cheap things change. We got the internet, we got transportation, we got all sorts of things we didn't have 10, 20, or 30 years ago. So we always have to update, modernize, and we're always thinking, trying to make the people safe. 
any, anything we can do to, to help law enforcement, we'll do it. Whatever it takes to put our men and women out there, keep them safe, like give them the necessary tools that they need, we'll, we'll debate it all day long because we believe in law enforcement in the state of South Carolina. We believe in, in the, the right to bear arms. And we, we don't believe it's going to be the wild, wild west. And long as people like the NRA are still around, we'll probably hear back from them again. <laughs> Outside of law enforcement, but just for you, South Carolina, is anything more for them on that? Probably not this year. I, 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 I don't know what will happen next year. I don't think you'll see anything this year. But I, I, you never say never, because like the governor said, we, we'll, we'll always, things are always evolving. And so we'll, we'll I, would, I would guess somewhere down the line, we may have another discussion about that, but I don't think you'll see anything else this year. Many, yes, ma'am. Many local law enforcement agencies um, call, this, call this bill a waste for criminals. What is your response to that? We, we've heard, we've heard uh, such things. I don't know that we've exactly heard that, but there has been some concern about uh, the availability of, of guns. But it's, the availability, I don't think any state that's had this uh, law or one like it passed has shown any more availability of guns. I'll tell you what uh, some states have witnessed is in just recently, as we've all seen in some states where they do not enforce the law, in some states where the criminal elements are not af afraid of confronting the police, let alone a citizen who might or might not have a gun, we've seen crime skyrocket. And the only reason some of them are not showing increased crime statistics is because they're not prosecuting anybody for anything. But we're not doing that here. I think with, with this law, with the graduated penalties and standing up for that Second Amendment and those people who want to be able to take a pistol with them, if, if they feel threatened at home or wherever they go, if they feel threatened, we don't want them to feel threatened. If they can find safety and comfort in, in having a, a firearm with them, then that's exactly what the, the first, the Second Amendment is there for. That is called speculation. <laughs> <laughs> we don't speculate very much. Next question. <laughs> Any more? Well, I want to thank all of you for being here, and again, want to thank all of you. On behalf of the 5.37 million happy, proud South Carolinians for doing this great work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.